the book of Revelation again. Chapter 3. I was doing a series on the churches. This is number 5 in the set. Next week we will finish up the series. I know there were seven churches, but we did the first two at once. So we got six messages. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 through 13. Again, we titled this here, What the Spirit Says. So we will begin. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia write, these things say he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie, Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. I hold that fast which thou hast, and no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. <coughs> Church of Philadelphia. This church and the Church of Smyrna are the only two churches that did not receive any rebuke for what they were doing. That's pretty impressive. That means they were doing something right, right? And and, and both of those churches were considered insignificant in the world at that time. Why? Because they were small, they were poor, and they had little strength. We look at a lot of people who judge God blessing the church by how much people they have. That church is definitely doing something right. Look at all the money they have. But in other areas, Jesus said that these churches were big money, but they, they were still dead. It's relying on the Word of God, it's relying on Jesus Christ. That's, that's where it's at. It has nothing to do with money. Do you think God needs your money? We use the money to pay bills and help spread the gospel. It is to help spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. So yeah, we ask, we ask that you give your tenth or whatever it is that you can afford to. I don't know if you can afford that up to you and God. What he lays on your heart, that you can do. But the dedication is to the word of God. We need to be, that's where the strength is, you see. That's what Jesus was saying. It's, it's all about that, the word of God. This is what's being lost. That's what was being lost in a lot of the other churches. The word of God. So there was that little strength, but they had the same enemy. What was the enemy? The synagogue of Satan. The Jews that were lying, coming in saying they were Jews, but they weren't really Jews. They, they didn't have that heart circumcision. How many Christian people say they're Christian people, but they're lying to other people? You have preachers that are lying to their people and leading them right to hell. You have people who are teaching the word of God their version of the Word of God, not the actual Word of God. They're not, they're not telling you what it really means, but what they want you to think it means. Oh, I know, I was 
I was talking to a fellow who is a Brazilian preacher out there who was telling people, you know, you have you have diabetes. If you give me a thousand dollars, I'll pray. You won't have diabetes anymore. So the guy gave him the thousand dollars and he prayed and said, don't worry about taking insulin anymore. You don't need to do it. And he almost died. That's taking the word of God for what you want it, not for what it says. There are those people out there who are scamming. And, and there's no strength in that. These are the people of the synagogue of Satan. And we need to stick to what is true, what is real. This is the word of God. Who am I to change it? The Bible actually says that if we do change it, we're going to answer for it. We're going we're gonna to be removed out of the Lamb's Book of Life. We're going we're gonna to get the plagues that are in it upon us. So don't change it. So look a little bit about this Church of Philadelphia. Church of Philadelphia was located approximately 30 miles southeast of Sardis. It was founded in 200 BC by Attalus uh, Philadelphus. And his name in Philadelphia meaning brotherly love or one who loves his brother. This church represents the church period from 1750 right up to present. From 1750 right up to present, this church represents. That's pretty interesting. So what does it mean? What's it all about? You see, this church, they understood to be watchful. They understood not just to be watchful, but to strengthen the things which were dying. To hold fast onto the things that, that were real and true. Man, Jesus is the truth. His words, these are truth. This is what we hold on to. Anything that we find, the Bible says, that is good, that is solid, hold on to that. <coughs> this is what's good. This is what is solid. We can hold on to the word of God because God, he cannot lie. If you're serving a God that lies, you're serving the wrong God. This is, this is what it's all about, the word of God right here. You see, this is where the strength is. When Jesus said you had little strength, it's little strength. He's looking at he's, he's talking about upwardly. A little strength in this world. A little strength compared to the strength of this world. The church has that little strength, but inwardly, spiritually strong, spiritually sound. That's where the strength is. These people were not just reading the word and, 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 and that was it. They were making a difference. And, and so they were being commended. Little strength, that condition that was outwardly. Though they were small in number, though they were poor in finances, the internal viewpoint was that they were strong spiritually. And how does the church become strong spiritually? By digging into the word of God. That's it. And that's what it's all about. So, so who said that? He that is holy. He's set apart from everybody else. None of us can compare our holiness or righteousness to him. He's definitely on a league of his own. Praise God. Amen. So he that is holy said this. He that is true. Huh. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. When he was talking to Pilate, he said, I'm, he said, if you knew the truth, and Pilate said, truth, who is the truth? And Jesus said, I'm the truth. I, not me, Bill Missouri. I'm, I'm not the truth. Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, he is the truth. And this is what we have to listen to. He that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. Praise the Lord. So, why? How is it possible that this little church with a little bit of people and a little bit of money, with that little bit of strength compared to the strength that Satan has in this world, how could they possibly be strong? Word of 
paid dedication to studying the Word of God, to coming to Bible studies, to discussing the Word of God. That's how they do it. How do you study the Word of God? If I want to study the Book of Romans, I'm going to read the Book of Romans. Then I'm going to study what the Book of Romans says as I think about it. Then I'm going to go back and I'm going to start picking the verses apart so that I can learn what it actually says. So it takes dedication to get into that Word of God. And as you do that, you, you, you start to understand, I don't just believe the Word of God. You believe the Word of God? Anybody here not believe the Word of God? Do you believe the Word of God? Say amen. 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 So we got the Word of God, but it's not just believing. There's a lot of churches out there that are dead. Dead churches where the people say, oh, I believe the Bible. Okay. But do you live the Bible? That's the question that we have to ask ourselves. So listen, listen to what's being said now. I'm going to go into the book of James real quick. I, I, I want to read for you. <coughs> James uh, chapter 2 and verse number 19. Thou believest there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Believing does not make you any different than somebody who is dead. The devils, the fallen angels believe in God and they tremble at his name. Man don't even tremble at his name. The devils have more respect for God than man has. Think about that. They know. They were there. It is being grounded. These people are grounded in the integrity of faith. They didn't just hear what the Bible had to say. They believe what the Bible says. And according to James verse, uh, chapter 1 and verse 22, it says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. These people were doers of the word. They didn't just believe the Bible. They let the Bible saturate them. They let the Holy Spirit of God clean them up. They went out and taught people about Jesus Christ because they know He redeemed me. He took me from where I was and put me to where I am. And I have to praise His name for that. And I'm going to serve Him. And in serving Him, I'm going to study what His words say. And I'm going to do I'm not just going to hear. Hearing isn't going to do you any good if you're not doing. You have to be a doer of the word. In other words, you have to let it rebuke you. Oh, I don't want to read the Bible if it's going to make me feel convicted. That's what it's supposed to do. If you're going to use the Bible properly, it is for, for correction and instruction and righteousness, for rebuke. It is so that when you read it, you get convicted and realize the fact, I'm a sinner that needs to be saved by grace. These people were standing on the word of God and preaching the truth of salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ who redeemed you of your sin. And they weren't worried about what other people were saying. They were sticking to the fundamentals of the word of God. Oh, how many churches are turning away from the fundamentals for following science, falsely called. We're going to change everything. And that's not what was going on here. These people, they actually behaved like the words of God say to behave. We're supposed to be Christ-like. We're supposed to be Christians. If we're supposed to be ambassadors of Christ. Are we? Are we supposed to shine or are we supposed to cover up? The Bible tells us to shine and to shine bright. How do we shine bright and cover up at the same time? 
We're not supposed to hide in this world. We're supposed to be a beacon of light. This church was a beacon of light. You say, oh, but you don't understand. No, I do understand the fact that they lived in very dark times too. It's not just us in today's generation that lives in a dark time. And this church is representing our time. But the church of Philadelphia, why, that was established back in the Apostle Paul's time, where the Romans still had rule over the places of the world. They weren't a nice people. There was still people being hunted down and killed just because they were Christians. Oh, that don't happen today? Sure it does. So that's some of the people that follow us on Facebook that are in different countries that they don't get hunted down. Watch what happens. But don't get hunted down in America, but you will eventually. Don't believe it? You don't have to. You can see it. You know it's coming. These people stuck to the Word of God, man. And, and they weren't worried about it. They kept the Word of God. And, and the Word of God is what provides strength to the churches. The Word of God gives us the ability to stand in the adversities that we face. To be able to say no to the temptations that come to us. To, to, to get us in a better relationship with God so that we can allow His Holy Spirit to do the work that he wants to do in us, to mold us, and to make us, and to use us. Time, as we read in Sunday school, is running out. Look, there goes a second, oh, another second, another second, another second, another second. You ain't getting that time back. When you leave here, you're entering the mission field, my friend. What are you doing out there? Are you shining? Are you letting it shine? Let the Holy Spirit shine? Or are you holding them back and suppressing them? Are you crunching them? We can't do that. In the eyes of the world, today's church is of little strength. In the eyes of the world, the church is meaningless and it's useless. And instead of getting into the Word of God, you might as well just start getting into psychiatry and, psycho and, and, and psychology or, or, and, and get into all these other ologies. I can't name that word, so I'll just call them ologies. Abandon the Word of God, they say. You don't need salvation through Christ. You don't need Him to sacrifice for you. You can do it for yourself. That's what they want you to do. Stop telling everybody about this Jesus guy. He wasn't real. He's a fable. The only reason why they made, made up God is because people were bad and they wanted to try and straighten them out. That's what they want you to believe. Nobody created this. It's a giant accident. That's what they want you to fall for. That's where they're telling you all of a sudden, you have people say, oh, they found the missing link. Really? Because I didn't hear that on the news, and I'm pretty sure that would have been in the news and all the newspapers. Oh, no, you can look it up online. I read it online. They found the missing link. No, actually, they didn't. They haven't even really been able to establish caveman. Oh, well, they have fossils. Really? Take a look at some of those fossils. Those cavemen that they have that are all hunchbacked, <laughs> like they're walking around like this. When they do their studies on them today, they find out that they had spinal problems. Huh. What about the Nebraska man, Pastor? Well, the Nebraska man, they had this one bone they found. They built this whole skeleton. And then they come to find out that that was the bone, the bone of a wild boar. They made a person out of it. Yeah. What about dinosaurs? Well, I'm not saying there weren't no dinosaurs. 
Pretty sure the Bible speaks about dinosaurs. I'm not refuting dinosaurs, but I will refute the fact that man was an ape and grew into be a person. Because before he was an ape, he was a frog. And before he was a frog, he was a fish or an amoeba or some kind of slime. I don't believe that. And if you look at evolutionists, most of them don't believe it. And I'm talking about like the scientific ones, not people who just say, oh, I'm an evolutionist. Don't even know what evolution is. Then you have your big bang theorists. Oh man, you gotta believe that nothing and nothing had a collision and created everything. No, I believe God spoke everything into an existence. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna abandon the word of God for the ignorance of man. I'm just not gonna do it. But you don't understand, he went to school for a long time and he's learning what man told him to learn. Pretty simple. Look at what the school systems are doing to the people <laughs> today. You think they're making them higher education? They're making them ignorant. We call it the dumbing down. Everybody knows it's happening. So we need to stand on the word of God because this is our strength. Mm -hmm. This is where it's at. This is the truth. This is what will set you free from the bond of sin. This is what will give you eternal salvation. The word of God. Nothing else. It is by the word of God that the Holy Spirit begins to convict if the word of God is being properly used. <clears throat> Not being a hearer of the word only, but a doer of the word. Man, you gotta let it go, you gotta do it, you gotta be faithful to the word of God. We must remain faithful and be in full subjection to the word of God and the Holy Scriptures, to Jesus Christ. That's what we have. Amen? Amen. Yeah. So we go on, and, 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 we, and we see that thou hast not denied my name. Oh, they didn't just repent and, 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 and make confession. They didn't just do that and then call it quits. But they actually lived in the name of Jesus gathered together in the name of Jesus Christ. That's, that's what's all wrong. That's where it's at. They didn't just confess his name and, and get baptized. They did confess his name and get baptized. But they got involved. They got to do what they were supposed to do. They, 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 were, they were redeemed and faith, just, just faithful to the one who redeemed them. Think about that. Are we faithful to the one who redeemed us? Jesus, the Christ. When he was born, behold, the Savior is born. Emmanuel with us. God with us. His name will be Emmanuel. In the city of David. Oh, he holds the key, David. He's going to rule on the throne of David because God made a pact with David and said, your throne will last forever. Jesus has that key. When he was going to be baptized, John said, behold, the Lamb of God which takes away the sin. As they crucified him on the cross, he said, It is finished. It's my hands I commend my soul. He did the work. He rose again three days later and was seen by hundreds of people. He's coming again, my friend. Praise God. Can we not be faithful to the one who's redeemed us? The one who, who tells us 
that if you put your faith in me, that if you call upon my name, you will be saved? Or are you going to take it into your own hands? So I don't believe in God or heaven or hell. Well, you know what? Honestly, I hope you're right. If you don't believe there's a heaven or a hell or a God, I hope that you are right. Honestly. Because if you are right, I didn't lose anything. I lived a good life. I tried to be a good person. But if I'm right and you're wrong, man, you lost everything. And you better consider that. And I'm going to hold on. In verse number 8, he says, I know thy work, behold, I have set before thee an open door. No man can shut it, for thou hast little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. Which, he said, he will have them bow down to our feet. You know what? He opened doors. But we started talking about that in, in the book of Acts, didn't we? On Wednesday about how the Lord opens the doors. This door is the door of ministry, of opportunity to preach the Word of God, to teach the Word of God. This is the door he's talking about. Well, how do you know that, Pastor? How do you know he's talking about opening the door of ministry? Okay, I'm glad you asked. So I'm going to read a couple of verses for you. And the first one is going to be in the book of Acts, chapter 14. <clears throat> Go figure. Wow, Pastor, you're going to read Acts chapter 14. No, here's verse number 27. And when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. That door of faith that was opened was so that Paul could go in there with Barnabas and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ so that the Gentiles, those heathen, those godless people, could get saved. Praise God for that. Now, okay, let's jump over to 1 Corinthians. In, in 1 Corinthians, chapter 16, verse number 8 and 9, it says, But I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost, for a great door and effectual is open unto me. There are many adversaries. And again, that door, that great door was open in Ephesus for Paul to be able to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ in a city where people were doing whoredoms to the goddess Diana. And it was both. But the door was open, and he used the opportunity to preach the gospel, my friend. Do you not see it? Colossians chapter 4. In Colossians chapter 4, in verse number 3, it says the following. With all praying also for us, that God would open unto us the door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds. Again, Paul is praying now. He's asking for prayer. Please pray. Please? <laughs> Please pray that God would open up the door for that utterance, for me to be able to speak the mystery to these people, for me to be able to speak salvation to these people. That's what Paul was praying. That wasn't a selfish prayer. He was praying that God would give him an opportunity, open up a door in this place for me to preach Jesus Christ. And when doors are open, we very rarely tend to walk through them. But we need to walk through them doors when they're open, while they're open, because he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. God the, the, the world and the people of the world and, and Satan cannot destroy the house of God. His church will not be destroyed if they're standing on the word of God. Oh, you're going to have adversaries. Everybody has adversaries. 
especially the world against you and the people who are so wrapped up in their own little lives and listening to the pollution that goes on through media, say, man, what's wrong with that church? They preach against that. How dare they? Because it's what the Bible says. Well, Tom says it's all right for me to do drugs. But the Bible says to stay away from that stuff. Huh, what should I do? The Bible says don't commit murder, yet we kill millions of babies. Still murder. And now we're at a point where they can be halfway out of the womb and get killed. Coming right out. Let's ice pick them. Doink! Ought to be praying that a door opens up to stop that. How dare he preach against that? Huh. It's my body. I have a choice. Yeah, you do. Keep your legs closed. There you go. We're not supposed to be committing fornication anyway. So you're not supposed to be having sex without being married anyways. So if you get married and you have kids, all oh, God says that's a blessing. There you go. Well, I don't like that, preacher. I don't, I don't care if you like it. That's what the Bible says. Not me. We've got to stand on the Word of God. We've got to ask for these doors. Paul said, Lord, Pray, pray that he'll open the doors. Look at, there was times where Paul pushed against that door. He wanted to go to certain places, and, 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 and Luke tells us that the Holy Spirit said, no, you're not going to preach in Asia Minor. No, you're not going to preach over here in this place. And Paul wasn't able to go there and preach. But, I'm going to read you those verses so you don't think I'm just making stuff up. So I'm going to go again into the book of Acts, chapter 16. I hope that's where I'm going to go anyways. Verse 6 and 7. Now when they had gone throughout Pergia in the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach, a word in Asia, after they were come to by Messiah, they assumed to go to Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. So there, Paul, there was a couple of places Paul wanted to go and bring the Word of God, and the Holy Spirit said, No. That door hasn't been open to you. Push as he might, he wasn't able to go there. But what happened? In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, man, preachers all over the place today, ain't he? 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse number 12. Furthermore, when I come to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, and a door was opened unto me of the Lord. So though there were places that the door was closed because when it's shut, no man can open it. But when it's open, no man shuts it. Paul said, hey, when I got there, the great door was open. So the door that Christ is talking about here in Revelation that door that is open, it is still open today, my friend, to preach and teach the Word of God from its entirety, every bit of it, front to back, all the meat. But we don't want to do that in today's world. You know what? We might be a little church, but we are a spiritually strong church. And maybe not all the people in here are spiritually strong, but that's your fault. If you're not spiritually strong and you're coming to this church, it's your fault. Because you're getting to meet in this church. And if you're not spiritually strong, it's because of your own lack of study, your own lack of prayer, your own lack of being what God wants you to be. You can't kick against the press and think you're going to be effective, my friend. It's not going to happen. You've got to surrender to it. 
You got to let him have his way with you. Let him do what he wants to do. Pray for that utterance. Amen. The opportunity is here and the door is still open. But pretty soon, my friend, and I don't know when, but when the church is removed, when, when Jesus comes with that shout of the, uh, the voice of the archangel, the trump of God, the dead in Christ shall be raised, and then we which remain shall be caught up in the clouds of them forever. Guess what? That's the removal of the church, the removal of the Holy Spirit. The door is shut. Salvation through grace, that dispensation will have entered. Woe to those who will remain. But Jesus said, right there in, in, in verse number 10, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. This is how I know I ain't going through the tribulation period. Because when that time comes, Jesus said, you kept my word, you put your faith in me, and I'm not going to let you go through that. I have saved you from that hour of temptation that's going to come upon them. the whole world to try them people. To take the mark of the beast or not to take the mark of the beast. <coughs> to feel the wrath of God or to not feel the wrath of God. My friend, I don't want to feel it. And I pray you don't want to feel it, man. Give yourself to the Lord. He said, you put your trust in me. You kept my word. I will keep my word and I will keep you from that time. Isn't that wonderful news? Isn't it wonderful news that Jesus said that if, if you don't deny my name before men, I won't deny your name before my Father? These people kept his name. My friend, keep his name. Don't be ashamed of the name of Jesus Christ. There's power in the name. The Lord presents opportunities for preaching the word. We've got to take it. We've got to have faith. We've got to do his good will. And we've got to stop playing around because things are happening really fast. So let's do what we're supposed to be doing and do it in unity. One body. One mind. The mind of Christ. Let us get into it. This church, this church, it, it had vision. Without vision, the people perish. We need, a, we need to be a church with vision. Vision of, of how we can reach the people with Jesus Christ through the Word. Not how do we change the Word. What can we do? We can preach the Word of God. That's what we can do. That's what we got to do. So we got to know the Word of God, man. We got to believe it. We got we got to we got to let it saturate in us and and, and do what we we got to do. There's a church with vision and compassion. They had compassion for people. What happened to the compassion? Oh, the neighbor over there. I could care less if he comes to church. I could care less if he dies and goes to hell. Hey, me. Is that your attitude? Where's the compassion? Are we not supposed to be compassionate for this lost and dying world because? Somebody showed compassion to me. That's how I got saved. They were compassionate enough for me to present me with the gospel and the Holy Spirit of God said, hey, what you're doing is wrong and you need me. You need Jesus Christ to clean you up or guess where you're going. Oh, it might not have happened the very first time I heard the gospel, but you know what? I came to the realization that somebody had that compassion. Do you have compassion for the people around you? This was a church... They had vision, they had compassion, and they had zeal to do the work. And that's what we need today. We need zeal. We've got to have zeal to, go, to do the work of God. Oh, it's, we're, we're, we're in trying times because, like we discussed earlier in Sunday school, man, we can't be going knocking on doors. Ain't nobody wants you knocking on their doors. You might give them a virus. But you still have opportunity to speak with people. Even with a mask on, you go to a store, there's still people in the store, and if you don't converse with people, I, 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 I don't get it. I talk to people about trying to put my mask on, because I still have to go food shopping. I still have opportunity. 
So don't you. But do you have a zeal for the work of God? Do you have zeal? This church had it. This church represents from 1750 to present, my friend. Do you have brotherly love? Not just for one another, but for the people who are dying and going to hell. Do you have any compassion for it? We're going to end with that thought. We're going to have a word of prayer, and we're going to get to our business meeting. So I just ask everybody to bow their heads, close your eyes, and, and pray with me. Follow us. I pray, Lord, for my brothers and sisters in Christ that we would have zeal to do the work that is set before us, that we would indeed allow the light to shine, that we've become just a, a beacon, Father, bright and shining in this dark world that we live in. Father, we see time is coming at hand, and I pray that we would show compassion to this lost and dying world and bring the word of God, your holy words, to these people, the gospel message of our Lord Jesus Christ who died for the sin of the world. That all we have to do is repent of our sin, recognize we're sinners and repent and, and give ourselves over to, to, to the washing and regeneration by the blood of Jesus Christ, Father. And I pray, Lord, for my brothers and sisters to be strong in the word and do that. And, and for those who have never given themselves over, Father, I pray that they would realize that they are lost, dying sinners and they need salvation through Jesus Christ. And I pray they would invite you into their lives, Father, and that you would wash them clean, that they would become brothers and sisters of mine. I don't care where they are in the world, Christ died for all the world, all of mankind. So I pray, Father, that we would seize the opportunity to, to use this open door before it is closed. It's too late. And we pray your blessing upon bring forth your holy words through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen.